Hi, so this is Code Cowboy here, and I want to do side-by-side -side comparison here of a database that is non-partitioned and a database that's partitioned, and they're exactly the same. So what I've set up here is a database uh, with 40 million rows. So you see here there's 40 million rows in each partition, and in the partition database, I've split them by year. So you'll see I split it between 2005 to 2020, which is the 17 partitions that you see here. Uh, this being 2005 and this being 2020, and this being anything above 2020. So you'll see here in one of the partitions I have 3.4 million rows, 4 million rows, 4.4 million, million rows, 4.65 million rows, uh, versus the 40 million rows in one partition. And if I do a query here, so you'll see here I have a query on the non-partition and a query on the partition, and they're exactly the same query, um, A being the non-partition and B, B being the partition table or partition database. And I'm going to run it here. And you'll see that there is a huge performance gain, uh, provided that you provide the partition key here, which I have. Uh, so in the execution plan, you'll see that the first non-partitioned uh, tables took 89% of the cost, while the second one took 11% of the cost. So that is already a huge performance gain that you see. And if you notice, in the if we examine the query plan here, you'll see that it actually went through the actual partition count was two. So you'll notice. Uh, the date that I've provided here spans two partitions, which is why you see the two there. Uh, now if I look at the I.O., you'll notice the non-partition table used about 900,000 reads, while the partition table only went through about 200,000 reads. So, uh, you know, that is a huge difference in the performance. Now, let me cheat a little bit here and uh, help out the non-partition table. So I've created a order date index on the non-partition table, and I'm going to force this query to actually use that. So I'm going to rerun this query here with that index in place, and let's see what happens. So you'll see here it comes back. And keep in mind, there is uh, cumulatively 40 million rows in this one table. And so this time around, the first query, which is the non-partition, took 98% of the cost, while the second one took only 2% of the cost. And if I look at the I.O., you'll notice now this one actually had 15 million reads. <laughs> while this one only had 200,000 reads. So uh, once again, you'll see there there is a difference. Um, but one thing I want to mention is um, there's this huge performance gain because I have used the partition key. And what I mean by partition key is um, when I created my clustered index here, you'll notice I gave the partition scheme uh, as by the by year through the order date. And the reason why the reason why I like this partition scheme is almost every system that you encounter, or at least 95% of systems that you encounter, uh, partitioning by date, whether it's a create date, wh whether it's um, uh, creating orders or cr uh, creating deliveries or uh, patient creation or healthcare records, there is always some idea of a crate date. So you, you might have a situation where, you know, the, the um, data that is created six months from six months ago is more frequently accessed than data that's created a year ago or two years ago. But, but the date that you use uh, might not be the order date or the create date, it might be a modified date. So that is something that you would have to analyze internally with your system just to see you know, what is the uh, 
uh, more or less perfect um, sort of key that you uh, partition key that you actually want to use uh, for certain tables. Um, but in my case, I, I just kept it simple um, be, because in, in a lot of the systems I encountered, uh, pretty much I can use the same partition function and the same scheme uh, on all of the tables and it hugely solves a lot of the performance issues si simply because um, a lot of the data that most people have you're only looking a year back or two years back um, and anything past that usually is uh, rarely accessed data which you want to segregate and uh, sort of uh, keep it out of your range of searches um, so but you might want to uh, work in conjunction with uh, the UI developers or the application developers or the report developers to make sure that this partition key is used and, and designed into the UI as a requirement. Uh, you know, whether you're searching, you're allowed to search as far back as you want, but only in 12 month spans. So what this that does is that actually restricts your uh, partitions being searched through in my case to say two partitions versus all 17 partitions so if I only allow a user to search uh, a span of 12 months but they could search um, you know a span of 12 months one at a time uh, you know across 20 years uh, that would limit the data that or that would be scanned or the partitions that would be accessed so uh, that is one strategy you might want to use. Um, now, I, I went through a query here where there is a case that I'm using the partition key, but what if there's cases that I am not using the partition key? So here I've uh, actually commented out the date and I'm just simply searching for a order number. And I'm gonna execute that. And it's not, uh, too bad. It actually came back uh, fairly quickly, uh, c considering there's um, basically 20, uh, 40 million rows there um, in one table. And you'll notice, um, you'll notice once again here, it went across four partitions, as you can see. Uh, whereas this here is one partition, but, but you'll notice the difference here is that the non-partitioned actually was a lot faster than the uh, partitioned in this case, uh, even though uh, perception-wise it was negligible. Uh, if you look at the number of reads, this was basically half a million reads, and the other query was 50% more at 750,000 reads. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, just make sure you keep that in mind as far as performance. And also to test everything thoroughly in QA as far as uh, in your QA environment as far as doing performance testing and comparing and contrasting before you actually implement this in production. Um, so but that, that's really all I wanted to show here is the uh, sort of the difference uh, between the performance in uh, you know a database that's exactly the same with the exact data with a fair amount of data which is the 40 million rows in the table uh, not just in the database but actually in the table so um, that's really all I want to show and I hope this uh, gives you a little bit more insight into table partitioning and uh, thank you for watching.